Number 34. Fluid originally flows through a tube at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. To illustrate the sensitivity of flow to various factors, calculate the new flow rate for the following changes, with all other factors remaining the same as in the original conditions. So for letter A, it says the pressure difference increases by a factor of 1.5. All right, so basically, um, the, the best equation to probably use for all of these, we might not need it for all of them, but the best equation to probably use is going to be this one. Okay. Now, just understand some factors here that, uh, you know, the relationship between flow rate and all of these variables in the numerator are a direct relationship. What do I mean by that? Whatever factor the change in pressure increases by, that's P2 minus P1, whatever this thing changes by, if it changes by one and a half times, then Q changes by the same amount, one and a half times, all right? If the radius changes by one and a half times, right? Then Q will change by one and a half times raised to the fourth power, okay? Conversely, if any of the variables in the denominator change, for example, if let's say viscosity goes up, then Q will go down by the same factor. So if viscosity, let's say, increases two times, then Q will be halved, okay? Now, what we can do is this. We can reorganize this formula so that we create a nice linear formula. Instead of having a fraction on the side, let's bring all the elements out of the uh, denominator, and let's bring them on up into the numerator on the left-hand side. So we would have Q all multiplied by then eight times the viscosity, Right, times the viscosity. What's going on here? Why can't I draw viscosity? There we go. For some reason, that mu just get me. All right, times the length, that will equal then the, I'm gonna just write delta P for pressure change times pi multiplied by R to the fourth. All right, now what I'm gonna do is just create simple ratios from this equation, okay? So watch. So the first case, um, we're always going to have, so we're going to say the first case is comparing. So for part A, we're comparing the pressure differences now to the flow rate. So what I'm going to do here in my formula is I'm going to highlight the flow rate and where the pressure is. Okay, so I what I do now is I do this. I create one where I say Q original will equal delta P original. And then underneath this, because I'm creating a ratio, I'm now going to use Q of the new value divided by the change in pressure or the uh, pressure differential of the new value, okay? So what it tells us is that the, it tells us in letter A here, it says the pressure difference increases by a factor of 1.5, okay? So if the pressure increases by a factor of 1.5, what that's saying is this, that the, the pressure down here is gonna be 1.5 times the original pressure, right? So in other words, writing that out, I can write delta P original, right? The original pressure divided now by 1.5 times that original pressure differential, okay? So look, these cancel, right? Now, the original Q value was 100 cubic centimeters per second. I'm gonna leave it in those units. You can convert it into meters cubed if you want, but for this, I'm not gonna do it. Um, and then this will be divided by then Q sub N, right? Which is the new flow rate. So if you notice, how do we solve for this? Essentially, we can bring that out of the numerator, uh, excuse me, bring that out of the denominator into the numerator, and then just cross multiply these two values. So we realize that the new flow rate is gonna be equal to 150, 150 cubic centimeters per second, okay? And that's it. And that should make sense, right? According to our original formula over here, we said that if the change in pressure goes up by, let's say, 1.5 times, Q will also increase by that same amount, 1.5 times. Now, for each of these other ones, you can do the, the same analysis where, like, for example, in letter B now, all right, it says a new fluid with three times the greater viscosity. So now what you would do is you would highlight the flow rate and now the viscosity. I'm gonna do it one more time for this and then what we will do is we will, uh, I'm just gonna do the other ones a lot faster, okay? Um, so now let's write it out again. So Q times eight times 
the uh, viscosity times L will equal then delta P times pi multiplied by R to the fourth. So now we want to compare uh, the flow rate and the viscosity. Notice how they are on the same side of the equal sign now. So what I realize is that my Q original multiplied by my viscosity, my initial viscosity, right, or my original viscosity, will equal then the final values or the new values, the new volume flow rate multiplied by the new viscosity, okay? Again, it said a fluid now has three times greater viscosity. So the new viscosity is three times greater than the old. How do we represent that? Well, we represent that as saying we can take three and multiply it by the old viscosity, right? That would tell me what the new viscosity is. Okay, I'm solving for the new flow rate. This stays the same, right? And the old flow rate was 100 cubic centimeters per second. So notice here mathematically what happens. These cancel, right? And then I'm going to divide it by three because I want to find Q, sub n. So divide the side by three, divide the side by three, and lo and behold, look at what we get. We now get the new flow rate is 100 over three, right? 100 over three. And that's about 33 and a repeating, right? 33.3 now cubic centimeters per second. And that's what we said should happen. Take a look at the formula over here. We said that if n goes up, then Q has to go down. So N went up by a factor of three, then Q has to be reduced by a factor of three, except meaning it has to be divided by three. And that's exactly what we showed here, all right? So now moving forward, I'm gonna just try to run through these. We can do these quickly now, all right? You can set up all the equations if, if you still need, you can always solve it that way. So letter C says the tube is replaced by having, uh, by one having four times the length. So go to the formula over here. If n if L goes up by a factor of four, then Q has to go down by that factor of four. So in other words, the new flow rate will be equal to Q, the old Q over four, right? So we can now just plug this all in. So there's 100 over four, and we realize that this is gonna be 25 cubic centimeters per second. That's the new flow rate. Okay, letter D, what do we have? Letter D says, another tube is used with a radius 0.1 times the original. All right. So look, however the radius changes, if the radius is going to go down, which is said it does, right? It goes down to essentially 10% of the original value, a.k.a. it's reduced about 90%. So if this goes down to 10% of the original value, then Q will go down to 10% of the original value raised to that fourth power. Don't forget that. Okay. So in other words, we would write something like this. We would write that the new Q value will be equal to the old Q value, okay? Would be equal to the old Q, uh, where we have this old Q value, then multiplied now by the exact change, right? So it's 0.1 of the uh, old value raised to the fourth, all right? So that's exactly what we were mentioning before. So we have now here that the old value was 100, and this will now be 10% of the original raised to the fourth power. So the new flow rate is going to be really tiny. So 100 times 0.1 raised to that fourth power. And we get a value of 0 0.01. 0 0.01, 0, 0, and this is now cubic centimeters per second. So notice how sensitive the new flow rate is to changes in the radius of a tube. Okay, hence why plaque buildup inside of arteries are very dangerous because small changes in the radius, small changes in that size of the artery in terms of the cross section lead to large changes because it's raised to the fourth power in the flow rate. So eat healthy, everyone, and exercise. All right. Uh, if you don't, it doesn't matter. Just saying. Okay, so yet another tube. So letter E says yet another tube is substituted with radius 0.1 times the original and half the length. Oh, great. And the pressure difference is increased by a factor of 1.5. So there's just a bunch of things happening now. Okay, but this shouldn't really, uh, this shouldn't really be that bad. So let me just see where I'd like to place this. Just give me one second. Maybe what I can do is just move this stuff on over. Let me see. 
So I'll just move that there. Good. And then let's move this over slightly. Okay, so I'll write it on this, this area over here. All right. So now this is letter E. Okay, so let's see. Yet another tube is substituted with the radius 0.1 times the original. So again, we're going to have this happening. So the, so the new Q value will be equal to the old Q multiplied by this because that, that, that change is the same, right? So it's 0.1 raised to the fourth power. Then it says and half the length. So notice where the length is. Let me erase this down here. Notice where the length is. The length is in the denominator, right? So if the length is halved, that means Q should go up by that same factor, right? So if, if the length is halved, Q should double essentially, right? So in other words, if I divide this by one half, that would be the equivalent, right, of uh, increasing Q by two. Notice how if the viscosity is in the denominator, that's what I'm plugging in the change, okay? Oh, I, when I say viscosity, I meant length, all right? Both would have been the same, by the way, as you can see, because they're both in the denominator, but they're saying half the length, so I just plug that in where it is, it's in the denominator. So I plug in that change value down there. And the pressure difference is increased by a factor of 1.5. So notice now the pressure exists in the numerator here. So now I'm going to extend the numerator value up here and it's increased by a factor of 1.5. So just multiply that by 1.5. And now whatever this works out to be will be your answer. I right, remember the old Q was 100. So just to save a little space, I'm just gonna write that value in here, 100. And now all we gotta do is just multiply this all out. So it's 100 times 0.1 uh, raised to the fourth times then 1.5 divided by one half. And we get that it changes now by 0 0.03, okay? Uh, excuse me, not that it changes by, it is 0 0.03, okay? That's in cubic centimeters per second. So I mean, notice that if you reduce the size of a, of a tube, by this amount, right, to essentially 10 to 10% uh, of its original value, or reduce it to 90%, you can have the length and then increase the pressure, right, by essentially 1.5. And literally, you're not even anywhere close to what the original flow rate was, okay? Hence why, again, it's so, um, plaque buildup is so dangerous for your heart because as the arteries start to close, the pressure differential that the heart has to create has to go up significantly in order to try to maintain the same flow, right? Uh, it has to essentially increase that, that percent change, has to increase almost by a factor, well, it depends on how much the radius changes, but whatever the radius changes by a factor, you know, raised to the fourth power, the pressure is gonna have to change by that same amount to maintain the same flow rate. So it, 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 it is extremely problematic, all right, as you can see now. So anyway, Enough of that. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time.